and all the dead folks who put them. And as they went to put him down, he 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 set up. They said that he had, he was dead. They checked him, said he was dead, but he set up. And when he set up, he set up in terror. And and so he began to tell his story. And he said what happened was as he was going about his business for ISIS and got killed that day, he said he was he he went to a dark place, and he said he saw hell. And when he saw hell, he saw how bad it was. And he saw all the terror of hell. And, and he actually, uh, uh, as he's looking at all of this, the Lord delivers him out of it. And he kind of wakes back up. And he, he said, I need somebody to tell me how to become a Christian. And so this, this ISIS terrorist is now a Christian. So I want this story to be told, 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 told all over the place. Amen? Amen. Now, now, we've been doing the series on now. That's what I'm talking about. And... Uh, been talking about different ways to, to, to uh, uh, communicate with people, and, and, and we've been going on now. Actually, this is part four of communication. And last week, we started on how to listen. And, and next week, we're going to talk about how to talk. The week before that, we talked about how to listen to God. Then, we, last week, we talked about how to listen to others. And, we, and if there's any, any more needed, they're on that back, back, on that back table. I'm sorry. Look, <laughs> I thought you had enough. On that back table right there, a uh, 6D. It should be right in the corner. Right there. It should be 6D somewhere. Okay. Last week we started on how to listen to others. We're going to finish this talk, listen to others this week. Next week we're going to start talking about how to talk to others. It's very important, especially when the church is growing, we need to be able to listen, number one. And not only to listen, we need to also learn how to respond. And so, so it's very important. This stuff here, I, I, I tell you, you need to get you a, a three-ring binder and clip, clip three rings in it and put it in there. And you've got something, uh, some training material that not everybody's got their hands on. This is awesome stuff. And, and get a hold of it and get it in you because it'll, you'll learn a lot from it. Okay, everybody got an outline? You, if you don't have an outline, how? Okay. Now, now let's read through the first couple of uh, paragraphs here. <coughs> and then we're going to talk about this. And it's called, now that's what I'm talking about. You constantly and continually deliver messages that reveal your true disposition of your heart. Have you ever heard this saying? Watch, watch, watch. Uh, uh, watch you. What, what I see you doing speaks louder. Than, or what you are speaks louder than you say you are. Amen. And, and I've heard people say, well, I can get along a whole lot better. I'm just having a hard time right now. And so I'll just have to, I'll just have to change avenues, so to speak. The problem is, wherever you change to, wherever you go, that's where you're at. You're still there. Amen. So it's really important. You've got to change yourself. It's important to change yourself. So you constantly continue to deliver messages that reveal the true disposition of your heart. It's not just what you say, but it's the way you say it, the way you listen to others and look at others. And this has been our key verse. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only that which is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And again, this, this was a lot longer, but I've got to condense down to a couple of sentences. Listening, a heart that listens. Listening is easy to fake. Attentiveness is simply as simple to pretend, but real listening requires effort. Our self-centered tendency is to tune others out at our own thoughts. See, remember. You can listen four times faster than you can talk. So what does that mean? While well, somebody's talking to you, you, you can hear them four times faster, believe it or not. But you're not. You hear them at that speed. So if they're talking at a normal speed, and you can hear four times that, and if someone else is making noise or somewhere else, all of a sudden you're focused. I go to noise over here, or you hear somebody say a name that sounds familiar, your focus goes over there. You're still looking at that person, and you're still shaking your head, but you're listening to that conversation with one behind you, or you're thinking about what I'm going to do for lunch, you know, what I'm going to do for supper, how I'm going to get my car fixed. There's all this stuff going on in your head. So, uh, attentiveness is simple to pretend, but real listening requires effort. It's work. Okay? Our, our self centered tendency is to tune us out and our own thoughts in. We tend to muse, which is to think. To reminisce, which is actually now you're thinking about things that have happened or think about what we're going to say next. Remember, do not, and we're going to talk about this in a minute, do not listen to respond, listen to understand. If you listen to respond, you will never hear what they're saying. Okay? 
You have to fight that. Do not listen to respond. Listen to understand. That evidence is quite true. When I was going to school, I could pretend to listen all I wanted to when that test come right behind you. That's right. That's right. I, I was listening to somebody else. That's right. The second step to becoming a great listener is learning how to listen to others. Next week, we're going to talk about learning how to talk to others, okay? So here was last week's, the first three. And this is active listening. I also put out a list. And if y'all didn't get a list, uh, uh, Eddie or somebody will get you a list of how to do active listening, listening skills. But listen with focused attention. This is, this is just the scriptures. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. James 1.19. He who answers before listening. How many of us are guilty of answering before we listen? Amen? Okay. This is his folly and his shame. Proverbs 18, 13. Listen without judging. Dear brothers, take note. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. You therefore have no excuse who pass judgment on someone else. At whatever point you judge the other, you're condemning yourself because ye who pass judgment do the same things. Now remember... There's a difference. There's two words for judgment. There's discernment, and then there's then there, discernment is actually uh, 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 is not the the, the the penal term. The penal term would be you listen and you've already cast them into hell. You've already decided they're bad people. He says, I don't want you to look at people and say they're bad people. I don't want you to look at them and say you're just sorry. That's passing judgment. But you can look at people and say, wait a minute, they're, they're saying they're apple tree, but all I see is lemons. It's okay to discern. So remember, it's okay to discern, but it's not okay to judge. It's a, make sure you think about that now. Okay? So now, listen without dispensing advice. When words are many, sin is not absent, but he who holds his tongue is wise. Even a fool is thought wise if he keeps silent and discerning if he holds his tongue. So here we go. Get ready. Now here's the three new ones. And then next week we're going to talk about how to talk to people. We're talking about listening. Next week we're going to talk about talking. All right, number one, listen, this is hard, listen without becoming defensive. How come when somebody starts talking about you or talking about somebody, your loved one, or talking about something, talking about your team, you know, you don't see somebody come defensive, become defensive, you start talking about the, the, the you know, like NCAA tournament. All of a sudden, you start talking about one of their one of their teams. All of a sudden, now they've gone crazy. Or talking about somebody's football team. I mean, you know what I'm saying? They just get all up in their uproar. I've seen people just get all up. In, I've seen them have fist fights, fist fights over stuff like that. So here we go. These are the don'ts. I'm going to show you what the do's are. How to, how to listen without becoming defensive. Don't. This is a don't. Number one, expect others to have your point of view. Everybody sees things different. Every last one of us, we have things that, I'm going to tell you how it goes. Every last one of us have strainers. Our strainers are our past experiences, our present experiences, our past troubles, our past victories, our past defeats, our present struggles, our present view on faith. And so what you may see, it's like how many in here grandparents you cut them grandchildren a whole lot more slack than you cut your kids. You know, my dad, I've heard my dad, I've heard, I've, I've told my children, that's not the same guy that raised me. And my boys tell their grandchildren all the time, that's not the same guy that raised me. You know, and it's because we've been there and done that, and there's some things we've seen, we might, we might have done it different, maybe not. But now, you know, again, grandchildren are God's gift to us for not killing our children. <laughs> okay. Don't expect others to have your point of view. Number two, do not argue when you disagree. You don't have to get in a fist fight. I mean, you, you ain't got to listen. You're listening. You remember, you're listening to another person talk. This is all about listening. If you get in a fight, guess what? The listening's over. They're not going to pay attention to you. You've got to stop. It's work. You've got to make yourself listen. Because you know what? You may be disagreeing in five minutes down the road and think, wait a minute, I should have agreed with him. Number three, do not return an insult with an insult. If somebody talks about you while you're listening to them, don't, don't, don't turn it back on them. Just, just, just look at them and smile. And say, a lot of times when I tell people, that's, that's your opinion, you're, you're entitled to it. I tell people in the prison all the time, I respect your opinion. They'll tell me all kinds of things. I, just go, I respect your opinion. I know what mine is. 
And I want you to respect mine. Even if you don't, I'm still going to respect yours. And I even had, had a Muslim one night try to get in a fight with me. And here's this Muslim trying to fight me. And, and I just kept I just kept smiling. And I just kept telling him, you know, he started asking me things about Muslim religion trying to catch me in a, catch me all called up. And I was answering his questions. And so he said, wow, this is awesome. Before it was all over with, he told me, he said, dude, I, he says, I respect you. And the next time you come in here, you make sure you find me. He said, I want to talk to you again. But again, I could have got all offensive and got all in his face. But no, no, I, I practice this right here. And instead of losing the opportunity, I won the opportunity. I actually, when I was pastoring in Williamson, there was a very first couple weeks we were there. I was out working on my car. This guy comes up in a suit in the middle of the day. And he says, can I talk to you? I looked at him and said, sure. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, uh, you're a Jehovah's Witness, aren't you? He said, I sure am. I said, you're here to convert me, aren't you? He said, I sure am. I said, well, number one, let me tell you, I, I can't be a witness for Jehovah. He says, why not? I said, I didn't see an accident. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got laughing. And I said, the only reason you're here is to convert me. He said, yep, that's right. I said, well, the only reason I'm going to let you come is because I plan on converting you. <laughs> and that guy visited me for two years and would stay for hours at a time at my house and not one time, not once, I promise you before the Lord, not once that he mentioned Jehovah's Witness. But you know what? Again, I didn't listen to him judging him and beating on him. You know, I was just being comical with him and we, we got a good relationship going. Number four, avoid, uh, don't, don't, don't avoid the negative feedback of others. You know, sometimes when we're listening and somebody gets negative, we just want to shut them off. Especially when they get negative, negative on us. When they're talking, let them talk. Sometimes you'll find out if you just let them vent, they'll have a whole different outlook after they've been there. Because after they hear it, it's one thing for them to hear it in here. It's another thing for them to hear it come out their mouth. And so once they hear it come out of their mouth, they think about it and go, whoa, that's not what I, wow, that's not right. And so if you just let them vent, you'll find out many times they'll, they'll change their own mind without you having to do anything about it. And again, the whole time this is going on, pray. Pray, Lord, help me to keep my big mouth shut. Amen. Lord, help me to keep my opinions to myself right now. Lord, help me. Lord, help me just to stay calm. And a lot of times, I mean, it happens in prison all the time. Stay calm. You can watch it. The Bible says uh, in Proverbs 19 11, a man's wisdom gives him patience. It is his glory to overlook an offense. Or the discretion of a man to first is anger, and it is his glory to pass over the transgression. So, so remember, pick your battles wisely. A lot of times we're fighting battles we don't need to fight. We're doing things we have no need to do. It. We're getting all up tight over nothing. We're going to find ourselves in a battle. We're going to get chewed up and spit out. You know, uh, 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 just learn how just to chill. And, our, uh, you know, we, Patrick and I, have been slammed pretty hard at the prison by Muslims. I mean, they'll flat out tell you, I don't want to see you. I don't have anything to do with you. Just get out of my face. And, and uh, But when we start talking, they'll come up to the table. And they'll listen. And if we're going to pray, they'll pray. But they don't want you to talk to them directly. But they'll come up. And then there was that night, that young man, that young man, he was trying to survive, and he said, I said, would you like a Bible? And he said, I'm Kareem from the Nation of Islam. And I said, well, I'm David Linton from Boston Tribe. <laughs> 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 and, and, and so I said, would you like a Bible study? He said, sure, and a Bible too. But you know what? If I had been all offended or just walked off from him, you know, you got to learn, listen, because you were to get further down, you'll see some more of Here's what you do, dude. It didn't sound right in here. <laughs> here's, what you, here's what you do. Here's what you should do. Okay, thank you. Wow. Okay. Number one. You should display acceptance even when you disagree. I tell these guys all the time. I tell people when I see them on the street. When I see them in Walmart somewhere, I see them. I just tell them, you know, uh, I respect your opinion. Or I'll say, you know, a lot of guys fault in life for you to have that opinion. And who am I to tell you your opinion is wrong? I'm here. You know what I believe in. And I, and I, and, and I, 
I am not going to fight with you about what you believe. Number two, do look for the kernel of truth when confronted by another. In other words, look for truth. It may just be a very minute thing, but still look for truth because once you find truth, then y'all can build on something together. All right? Number three, focus on points of agreement instead of points of differences. You look for that little bit of truth. That night, that and that, that Muslim tried to get me in a bind, and he had, these, had guys in there with him, and they were all laughing and carrying on. I started to get upset when they were laughing and carrying on. I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not. And, and I said, you know what I'm going to do? He started trying to, trying to, trying to uh, pull me into something, and I said, I said, okay, you believe in Jesus? He said, yep. Yeah. I said, but you don't think he was the Messiah? He said, no, let's just, I said, let's just start there. You believe in Jesus? I do too. So you believe in Abraham, don't you? He said, oh yeah. I said, I do too. I said, you believe Ishmael was the one that was sacrificed on Mount Moriah? He said, yep. And I said, I, I believe that Isaac was. He said, yeah. I said, let's talk about some of this stuff. And so I found some focal points that we could talk about. And still, there were things we disagreed about. But you know what? Again, I told him, I said, well, you know, I understand why you, well, or I think I understand or help me to understand why you think that way. But again, we got talking, and I'm, I'm not kidding. When Mike would leave, he said, I want you to come, please come back. When I came back, I looked for him, but he'd already been moved to another facility. All right. Number, number three, four. <coughs> seek, to understand how, seek to understand how your emotions are affecting your communication. It's one thing for you to hear them talk about whatever, somebody you don't know, but the closer your relationship is with that person, the harder your emotions are going to be uh, to deal with. And so you've got to make sure, check your emotions, check them at the door. There's a time to use your emotions when you communicate, but when you're listening, especially when you first listen, try to put your emotions behind you. Number five, you know, it's like, like I learned that a long time ago with, with hospital visits and learned that a long time ago with funeral homes and, and funerals is you have to learn, and it's not always easy, is learn to, to, to put your emotions on the back burner if possible because if you don't, it's going to be messy. So you just learn how to put it back. Number five, seek to understand, not just to be understood. Not only seek to understand, but also remember, listen to understand, do not listen to respond. There's a difference. If I'm listening to respond, I've heard you say one word, it's in my mind, I'm waiting for you to be quiet so I can say what I'm going to say. You can tell when somebody's waiting for you to shut up so they can say something. You know how? Number one, watch this. Watch. While you're talking, they start going. And if you're not careful, they'll finish your sentence for you. What they're saying is, if you'll go ahead and be quiet, I'll tell you how to fix this. You know what I'm saying? I've caught myself doing it. I go. I've caught myself trying to finish the sentence and you got to stop that because I'm listening. We're in listen mode. Listen. And when you talk to somebody, if you talk to somebody for 15 minutes for the first 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 minutes, they might not even tell you what the real problem is anyway. They're filling you out because they even trust you to tell you. So if you stop and listen, if you're going to just go ahead and listen to respond, then what's going to happen is he's never even told you the real problem and you're already responding. you got to wait. You've got to wait. Timing is important. If it's a 15 minute conversation, it may be 14 minutes before he finally or she finally opens up and tells you what they're trying to tell you. So you've got to be patient and don't assume that you know it. Live in harmony with one another, be sympathetic, love, love as brothers, be compassionate, humble, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing because this is this because of this you were called. So first, don't be defensive. Number two, uh, listen with humility. Here's the don'ts. Don't see your humility as a weakness. Just because you, you just because you're humble does not mean you're weak. Matter of fact, it takes more strength to be humble than anything I know. The, the you get around people and you just sit there and there's times where I just smile. Sometimes I smile and I'm saying, Lord, help me just keep smiling because they have no idea what they're talking about. Thank you, Lord. Especially when they're telling me something I did and they weren't there. 
I didn't have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm just going to smile. You know, and, and, and when they get through, I'm sometimes they would say, are you through yet? <laughs> you know, uh, it's okay. Humble. Humility is not weakness. Matter of fact, here's the word for humility. Humility is strength under control. Strength under control. Number two, don't seek your own recognition or praise. If you're just listening to them so you can get your own recognition or praise, you've lost it. You're out of this thing. I like what we did uh, uh, on May. Y'all remember what it said before at the closing? Don't thank us. Remember that? Don't thank us. Because we're just doing what we were supposed to do. You thank God. And, and, and uh, 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 y'all heard that a lot. Don't, don't, look, don't thank us. Don't look at us. Look, look at God. All right. Uh, <clears throat> do not be easily provoked. If you can't handle it, step out of the way and let somebody else do it. If you don't think you can handle it, step away. If you think you're going to get upset, you think you're going to get Angry if you think you might even wind up striking them. Just, no, I'll have to talk to you later. And we'll talk about that next week. All right? Now, <coughs> don't, here's my, here's my pet peeve. This is my pet peeve of all pet peeves. Don't have a know-it-all attitude. I've seen people that think they know it all. The problem is they know all the answers. They don't know all the questions. And they think they just got it all figured out. Well, you know what? There's no such thing as a know-it-all. There's so much to know it all attitude. People are more concerned with you listening to them, with giving them answers. Most wives don't want to answer when they're, when they're, when they're downloading, when they're, when they're, when they're, uh, and husbands are the same way, but especially wives, when they just want their husbands to listen. Just be there and just listen. You don't have to solve everything. Guys don't solve everything. Don't solve everything, just listen. You know, and, and again, there's so many times, just listen. I can walk away. I bet I had said five words. I've been talking for 30 minutes. I said five words, believe it or not. <laughs> not and, and, and the person said, wow, that was so awesome. I feel so much better. The reason I feel better is I've had a chance to, to get it from here to here. And so now they're starting to, as they get it from, see, when it's just here, it's one thing. But when it gets here, it's another Here's where, here's where it winds up being seeming it. Here's where it winds up being, being tested. Here's where it winds up it can be a, a yes or no. So when it comes out of their mouth, then when they hear it, it's going to sound different out of their mouth than what they had in their head. How many ever had in your head something like, I just do something simple. Uh, uh, you had somebody that was going really to aggravate you. And, and, and you just wanted to holler in your head, you were hollering, shut up, shut up, shut up. And you were hearing that in your head, and all of a sudden you just hollered out, shut up! And you felt so bad after you did it. You didn't feel bad about it when it was here. But you feel bad about it when it's here, because now it's processed. So some people can just talk, once they talk, they process it, and they're figuring this stuff out again. You're not handling everybody's problems. If you handle their problems for them, then you're responsible with, with, the, with, the, with what happens. So here we go. Uh, here's what you should do. I got it right this time. You should desire God's approval knowing that you're his child. God will do this right. You should seek to serve others. You should value advice from others. You should be quick to overlook an offense. He who covers over an offense promotes love. That's what Proverbs 17, 9 says. And then finally, listen with love. Here's the don'ts. Don't close your heart to another. I've gone in before and two people were fighting. And, and I honestly believe with all my heart that this one person was right and this person was totally wrong. And this person was actually not only just wrong, but they were devastated. And they couldn't talk. And so I go over here to this person that was doing all the devastation. And after I actually sat down and talked with them, I actually began to feel empathy. <coughs> if I hadn't stopped to talk, I'd be over here with this person on the first times. But instead, I just stopped and I listened. And even though I didn't agree with them, I understood where they were coming from. And so then, 
then you can go in there and you can try to help them out. You can try to talk with them about what's going on. Again, what would happen Sunday morning? And we had this happen on more than one occasion through the years. I have as a pastor. What would happen Sunday morning if a guy from Edward or Aurora came in here that everybody knew? Knew. It was probably one of the meanest, obnoxious people in the area and came in this church and went and sat right I hope you would. I hope you would. I hope you're welcome. Yeah. But well, what would your inside be saying? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've had it happen on one occasion. I think the weirdest, and I've probably already told you, I have told you all, but the weirdest was the guy who went to, he lived in Coates, North Carolina. He went out and really got in trouble. He did some bad things, got really tore up, did some bad things. And he was not even sober yet. And he's riding up and down, praying to God for God to forgive him. And he rides, he says, God, I gotta find a church. I gotta find some place where I can get that altar. And so, and the Lord already showed me in a, in a dream that this place was going to be packed out and somebody was going to come to the altar. I said, No, he was going to be wearing cut off shorts. One leg was that long, one leg was that long. <laughs> and his hair was all out like he'd been riding a motorcycle, and his shirt was tore all up. They come walking in, and we had swinging doors, and he went through the swinging doors. So, yeah, he come, he come walking through those doors, and everybody turned around, and when they saw him, it was like, whoa. And I looked at him, and I thought our people would say something. And I was preaching on that everything's going to be all right in your past, your present, and your future. And he come in, and I said, come in and join us. Come get a seat. But the place was full. So the only place there was a seat was on the front row. And there weren't even room hardly there, so he gets on the front row. He walks up, and it's like he's shopping, and he stops and looks down there every hour. And the, honestly, the people are going like, and he gets on the front row, and he sits there like a wild man. And I'm preaching, everything's going to be all right. And I start singing that song, ah, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. And he started preaching, that guy jumped up and hollered, I got to get saved, preacher. And everybody still was just kind of going. And I said, well, come on. And I could not believe in the church of God, I was having to call people to come to all pray with me. So I called him up to go pray with him. And the guy got, the guy told me, oh, old man, he said afterwards, and he told, he told all kinds of this, you know, after service. But, but the guy wound up. Uh, coming back that night in a three-piece suit. Didn't even recognize him to come back that night. He was sober in a three-piece suit, and, and God just blessed him so much. But, but again, you never know, you never know who God may send through those doors. Of. So we got to be ready. Pastor. Yes, ma'am. The Sunday that Ella got saved, when he came That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's right. God had touched him. God had lifted, God had lifted his burdens. That, you, know, you know that's when it's real. So, uh, don't, put, don't close your heart. Don't worry. If you're still here, don't close your heart. Don't, don't tune out unpleasant conversation. If they're talking stuff that you don't necessarily want to hear, you might want to steer it a little bit, but don't, don't tune it out. And number three, don't find ways to avoid conversation. If you don't think you can handle it, step aside or, or just do it like this. You know, uh, you know what? I think you need to talk to this person right here. <laughs> just make sure you're not finding someone walking by and they don't know what's going on and just throw somebody out. And I'm going to tell you, here's a surefire thing to do. If, you've got, if you're in a church and something's going on that's kind of rough, call me. Okay, call me. I don't mind. I'll go. I'll, I'll do it. I've done it more than one time. Get right in the middle of it. It's okay. You know, uh, but, but still, don't tune out. Don't find ways to avoid conversation. 
And here, don't communicate impatience of boredom. While they're pouring their heart out at you, they'll be going. <sighs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Okay? You, I mean, now nothing ruins that. Nothing ruins it like that does. Okay? Love, let love and faithfulness never, never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on, on the tablet of your heart. Proverbs 3 and 3. And then, yeah. <laughs> And then finally, here's the, the should do's. Listen with a heart of compassion. Again, you've heard it said so many times, it's hard to be watching television on Tuesday or Wednesday night, watching the news, and then, then go right into, there'll be some things, this, this, these guys here rape this girl, and these guys here kill three guys, whatever, and they're in pit detention center. And I told Linda, I said, I'll see them Thursday. And I go in there Thursday, and there they are. Because I go over to the federal side, and usually Patrick's with me, so we, we get to see them while they're still hot. You know, and... and, and are you calling them free? What now? Are you telling them free? No, I'm talking about they're still hot. They've come in, they haven't been processed, they're just being processed. When you get locked up, they process you. They put you in the federal side, there's some deep blocks. They, they put you in segregation. They got to find out if you're in a gang. And if you're in a gang, you got to make sure they put you in. If you're going to general population, you have to make sure they put you in general population where that gang is not at. And if you're, if you're a policeman, they make sure you don't go over here. You know, they look out. But they got to find out all about you before they put you somewhere because of, because you're hot. And you may cause a big, bad problem. And, and you can mess up one time. There's guys that we've seen in general population for months, and they messed up one time, and now they're in segregation. And we might have seen them for five months in segregation and missed up one time. So, so it's, it's tough stuff in there. And so we get to see them when they're still hot. Some of the guys will never get in the general population. They're always going to be by themselves. There's, some, uh, there's been some policemen, former policemen I talked to, and they said they don't want to go to the general population. Because you know what's going to happen to them. So they don't, they don't want to be in general population. So they prefer being by themselves. And there's this one guy, so I'll be getting out in a month. And went, I went, went into segregation one night in the D block, and there he was. I said, usually when people have gotten in trouble, they put them in that block. And I said, what are you doing in here? You're getting ready to get out. He said, yeah. He said, I asked him to put me here. I said, in the D block? All by yourself? He said, yeah. He said, because I don't want to mess up. So he said, put me in here by myself, and I can't mess up with just me. And he was out. The next time he came, he was out. So he was telling me the truth. Listen with a heart of compassion. I got a chance to minister to a Jehovah Witness. And he wouldn't know if I could get him some watchtowers. And as a chaplain, you when they ask for this stuff, you're to bring it to them because they've got it. So because you minister to everybody. And so what I did was I gave him the watchtower that I found. And he would never take one of these. And so that night I said, here's your watchtower. I looked all over and I found it. I said, don't you want a Bible study? <laughs> he said, you know what, I think I will. And he took it for two or three visits. And then I think he kind of, you know, whatever. But still, it was good. It was amazing. So it's because, you know, you talk to people different. You know how to talk to them. Number two, unconditional acceptance. Did it say that you accept them un un I mean, uh, Unconditioned what they've done, unconditional acceptance. Meaning, I'm going to talk to you. We're going to talk. You know, like, like that, like leaving that day we walked in there and the guy had taken taken uh, uh, his feces and, and wrote all over his window so you couldn't see him. And, 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 I, and I walked up and I saw him peeping. So I said, okay, I'll see what he's peeping about. When I went to see him peeping, he slapped that door good and hard. And I said, okay, I'm through peeping now. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked out, that, that place felt so bad, and I thought I was going to throw up for a Okay. <laughs> Number three is an attitude of respect. If you can tell people, I respect your attitude, I tell them all the time, at Walmart, wherever, they say, well, I don't believe the way you believe. I can respect that. And here's how I always end that. Too many people, here, here's, your, here's your fallback. Remember this, here's your good fallback. Too many men and women have died for you to have that right for me to take it away from you. 
Whether I believe what you believe or not, it's too much. That's why we're married, or we're free. And then finally, listen. Listen. Listen with unconditional acceptance. Listen with an attitude of respect. And here's the most awesome one. Listen for underlying feelings. When you see the person, the underlying feelings of this person, you can then all of a sudden, man, you can start going from sympathy to empathy. Because remember, sympathy is just where I just kind of feel for you. Empathy is when I enter into it with you. And so once people start, you know, uh, uh, Patrick and I were talking to a guy, and the guy was having a bad night. Patrick went up to try to talk to him, and I, I just knew Patrick would get along with this guy. And, and for some reason that night, the guy just said, well, pray for my family. And he just, he just kind of pushed you off. And so I walked up there, and now all of a sudden he's changed. He wants to talk to me. And so I'm talking with him. And when I, I came back, the following week, I had a four-page letter from that guy. And since then, he's been moved to Raleigh. And I've gotten another two-page letter from him. But again, we were not, we were not handing anything different. We both had Bible studies in our hand. We both had the same information. We all had everything the same. It's just that night. Sometimes I go up and they don't talk to me and talk to Patrick. And so I don't take offense. And you know, I say, well, praise God, Patrick's there. Because they're going to listen to him. And Patrick says, I come in and go, whatever. <laughs> whatever. He says, you go to, we got so many to see, 750 inmates. you got to see them all. And so I go in real quick and Patrick says, he's going to go, Dominici, Tomatosi, something. <laughs> <laughs> What I do is I stop where I, when the guy said, can you please talk to me? That's when I stop. Okay. <clears throat> but Patrick's really good at that, that side over there. They love him over there. All right. <laughs> Empathy binds us together. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. One night I went up in the deep block, and uh, Patrick was with me that night, and the guy looked at me, and he said, I know what you need. And he reached right over like you got a gun, and he loaded it, and he pointed at my face, and he shot me three times. And I said, okay, how are we going to handle this? So I said, better win. <laughs>
Lord, you have prepared us and you are preparing us for something mighty. Lord, I ask you right now, Lord, to, to, to touch us, Lord, to, to minister to us, Father, in a way that glorifies you, Lord. Help us, Father, to glorify you in all that we do. You're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. And there's absolutely nothing, nothing that you can't handle. Father, in the name of Jesus, this night is yours. And God, I, I ask you, God, y'all get ready. I ask you, God, to challenge us. Challenge us with all this stuff we're learning. Challenge us for us to use what we're learning. Challenge us. Let's run into people that we're going to have to use this stuff and see what you can do and see how effective it can be. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Amen.